Hi, my name is Dino Mohic and welcome to my tutorial about creating water with trap code particular. A while ago I did this video with this watermelon and this fluid looking water effect. And actually I got this idea from an advertisement which aired in Germany and which looked like this. It featured this lime and this really nice reflow animation and I really, really liked this and thought is it possible to make something like this in particular only. Um, so I did this version here. It's not nearly as good uh, It's but it's getting there. It's kind of uh, a trick but uh, it's completely doable with uh, After Effects and After Effects plugins. And when Video Copilot's Element 3D came out, they actually had a lime in their food spec. So I recreated the fact and tweaked the water a bit, and this is the current version. And for this tutorial, I create, create, uh, created a preparation file, which basically just takes the core of it, the water effect, and uh, places it in a in a empty room. The reason for this is um, to get through all the settings and all the compositing I did in in the commercial version. Um, it would be too time consuming. And to explain the the effect on its own is actually pretty simple. So um, I'll split this tutorial in two parts. First one will be uh, building this up from scratch and the second one will be going through the compositing and the layers of the of this one yeah and um, let me say this that uh, this tutorial is for intermediate After Effects users meaning they you should have already some experience some basic understanding of Trapcode Particular and already watch some tutorials and play with it and I also have uh, experience of Adobe After Effects because uh, it would be just too time consuming to like I said to get everything from scratch and build the whole setup and everything around it um, from the beginning. Yeah with that said let's start so this is my scene of my preparation file. As you see, um, let's see, this is 100% in full resolution. It has this nice wobbly effect and it has the same watery look like I used in the lamp commercial. Um, and the fake one. So let's build the scene from ground up. Another composition. Okay, um, first let's get our particular layer. So, add trap code particular. So, this is our basic particular setup. Now, um, I'll just add some directional particles. Make it not a point, but a something like a bigger one so you can see it a bit more. Okay, this is working good. Um, let's pump up particles. Let's uh, make them last longer so we have a nice trail. And uh, let's make the size of them a bit smaller. Like 3.5. Uh, 3 yeah. Okay. So next step is uh, adding the lights. I will choose spotlights and um, let's get them in position. I want them to be one from the top and from from above, from from the bottom. Sorry. Okay, like this. Let's duplicate this light. Get it down there and rotate it so it looks up. 
should be okay for the beginning. Back to our view. Now let's turn on, oh, let's get this a bit randomized, fully randomized. Let them fade out a bit at the end. I'll open this a bit more so you can see it. Uh, let's get to the shading. Turn on shading. Uh, turn on the nominal distance. Crank it up so you have everything covered. And make it a bit darker. Okay, turn on shadows. This is a really important part. And get the opacity up to 100. Now adjust the size and the distance. Okay, let's see. Let's get it to 50. And now let's get it darker because you will see why I'm doing this later, but it has to be darker since uh, I'm recording this and you will see an internet and it gets compressed. Um, let's crank up the exposure so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'll choose uh, always in front for this. So we have just our basic particles emitting from a sphere and going to the right side. Um, let's give it a bit turbulence. Just we have some more randomized effect. This is just for the beginning. Oh, uh, let's reduce the directional spread. We don't need this. Um, okay. And uh, evolution speed down. We don't need it that much. Uh, perhaps a bit more. Okay, uh, next let's get two adjustment layers. We need two adjustment layers. On the first one, the bottom one, we will add um, noise median. Basically what this median does is um, it kind of melts uh, near, near, be nearby pixels together and how far it looks for the nearby pixel is it can define by the radius. So I'll choose 8 for this one. And next is, um, let's get our matte choker in. Okay. And now make it that it looks like, like little drops. Uh, get the choke back in the negatives. Okay, this looks like drops. It's not looking like it has to. But we are getting there, don't worry. Let's call this um, median choker. Now on the second adjustment layer, let's add stylized CC glass. Let's open all of the three menus and let's get the softness down to a really low number like two or three. Mm. Let's see. Too much. And remove the displacement completely. The height. Uh, give it a bit more height. And now the most important part, uh, which makes this effect uh, looking so good, is um, you have to choose. AE lights from the light from the light uh, drop down menu. The thing is, um, it probably if you are using After Effects CS 5.5 or lower, um, you will not have uh, this option AE lights. You will only have the effect light option. Uh, the thing is that um, Sidecore Effects, the makers of the nice CC plugins. Um, they don't distribute this Sidecore FX HD suit anymore. Uh, because this F HD suit uh, is included in After Effects CS 6 and above, but it's not included in the lower versions. Uh, you had the option to buy the HD version, um, but only uh, until May 2012. 
there so there are actually no options anymore to get this effect the cycrf x hd bundle for after effects cs 5.5 and lower i already talked uh, to cycor and um, they basically can't do anything about it so your only options are um, to either upgrade to after effects cs6 or um, yeah that is actually the only option <laughs> right now. Um, I hope they bring it back somehow or make it somehow possible to get it. Um, so this is really a bummer, but it's it's the only way uh, to get it by using After Effects CS6 and above and the next versions which will come. Okay, um, let's go on. This. AE options is losing is using the lights which we have in our scene as you can see if I move this a bit the light the lighting of our glass effect will change and this is what is selling the effect most now we can go in and tweak this a bit what you should do is get the roughness up I get like 0.25 or 0.3, somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3 should be good. And remove the metal, make it completely plastic. Now, okay, I can now now I can remove the exposure, or not remove at all. Let's say I just make it lower so you can see something. Get the speculars up. We don't need any ambient it's we do because we don't have any ambient light in here um, and concerning the fuse something you can adjust on how you like it yeah so as you can see we are we are getting somewhere it's already looking nice you can give it a little glow just to the to the upper parts upper parts on there don't have to be a strong one Just to give it a bit more kick. Yeah. Okay. Of course, it's not looking exactly like this. What's looking cool in here is this kind of spiral type of trail and the way it's rotating. As you can see, it's rotating like this. But let's do this now. Uh, what you have to change is you have to get a custom emitter and uh, I already prepared some custom emitters these are also the ones I used in uh, my watermelon fake commercial uh, basically it's a comp it only has 400 pixel width and 400 pixel height and um, it's actually just I'll remove this luma mat from now it's just a circle which I did with masks and I applied the fractal noise to it make it really dark and I animated the evolution just with a times time time times 60 value so it has some variation in it as you can see I animated it over here so it gets brighter the reason for it is uh, if I show you the old version it's low at the beginning and then it gets stronger so we have little particles over and then it gets stronger and stronger this is the this is animation that did here the more white the more particles are going to be emitted at these positions um, and I, you have to remove the black from this circle that's why I use this again and just I just copied this layer, this is the same layer, and add a luma mat. So now I only ha I have a transparent circle, a transparent ring with only the white pixels showing. Uh, let's see, like this, yeah. And it, as you can see, it's rotating just with time times 170. I animated it so it rotates in one direction. Now get to our comp and let's get this in here turn on 3d so it's in the 3d space and adjust the rot y rotation to minus 90 
so it's looking up there in this direction because this is the direction we want them to fly or to flow now let's make it smaller something like this and just animate it let's get it first over here and let's say six seconds let's get it over here now we have a nice animation and go into particular and as a meter type choose layer down here in the layer emitter choose our custom emitter and set the layer sampling to particle birth time and now for the layer RGB usage set none now it's already doing what we want but we don't see it because uh, we have far too less particles so let's crank this up more give it more 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 now we have something like 60,000 particles but it's not really 60,000 as you can see over here when I scrub up there the particles are total are something like 200,000 now but only 5,000 are visible that's why it's still relatively fast rendering okay it looks like this I'll just show you how it looks like if I remove the fractal turbulence now it's looking exactly or somewhere like the one I used in my commercial my fake commercial I always have to say fake commercial because I did not do the real real flow stuff I just did a cheapy looking particular stuff <laughs> um, okay now we can tweak our settings a bit so it looks a bit better than this uh, what you can do is to tweak it you you should uh, adjust the shadow shadow led settings in particular mostly the size you can make it have more like a kicker lighting coming from the back or from the top and using the distance you can also tweak it a bit uh, it's not going where I want it to this looks more like it here it has a nice glossy feeling oh let's say this is glass and you can play with this ones over here with height and of course softness it's changing the look drastically if you tweak this ones nah it's okay where it is now I think now to get this rotation which you can also see in this one but with, because here the camera is uh, rotating but you can see it in the other one better in this one that it's rotating like anti-clockwise you have to set it to go into particular and go down to wall transform and change this setting I would animate it so alt click time mm, too much 25 let's see let's go up there and remove the velocity yeah that was the reason because it was spinning them and emitting them in all the directions you have to remove the velocity from it and now it looks the way we want it to I'll set it to half resolution and try to yeah it's rotating anti-clockwise so what's happening here is our um, custom emitter let's show him see us here he is moving and he is emitting particles where at the position where he has white pixels so it's only emitting there by animating our fractal noise and moving it we kind of sculpt our particle spiral our particle tube we can sculpt it and that's the way how I did it in my commercial 
The layer emitter is one of the most uh, important features of Jackwood particular for me because um, depending on what you have in your uh, custom emitter in the composition, if you turn the vel velocity down to zero and you move the emitter from one side to the other like I do, um, and you're, quite, you're basically building up uh, a, or sculpting something with the particles which are emitted and this is really cool and you should remove the custom part so because he is still on and he is also affecting the glass so you have to make him invisible invisible what I also did was um, I took uh, took the spherical field and um, I used the coordinates from my custom emitter. I'll click over here and we have our position of a custom em emitter and bind this position of our spher spherical field to the custom emitter. It, he is now at the spherical field is now at the same position and now you can, depending on what radius you have, you can make it either collapse like sucking them in. This is how I did my the tip of my here of my animation. That's why it's or always looking like it's emitting from the center. And the second layer I did, that's why I said I did many layers, is this one where I had where it's coming from the sides. And I did this by just using a positive strength so it looks like this but for now let's get the, the tip one yeah cool okay uh, what else yeah oh yeah I did a I did a ball this ball I did in the beginning if you're um, asking how I did this I'll show it to you in the in the comp, I will not do it hand by hand now. Um, basically, I had um, I, I showed the I show you this comp um, layer for layer from the beginning. So first, our part my particle layers. This is the same particle layer as I did right now with you. It's looking like this. Then I had a second one. I called it a short trail, and um, I. If it, Let's zoom in here. Oops. Okay, the short trail is the same as the long trail. The same, like, so it means it's the same like the one we did already. Uh, it just has a really a uh, low life. It's only going until I think here, and it has darker particles. I did it just by um, lowering the diffuse. I used like 50 on the long trail and uh, only 13 at the in the short trail and it's above the long trail. I duplicated both again and why I did this is I'll show you just this two uh, in my gloss effect. So this is these are the two same adjustment layers I had. Um, as you can see if I remove this one the short trail one which is darker it looks like this or oh, it's oh sorry it looks like this. But if I add the short trail again, which is darker, it kind of looks nicer over here because it has a more like a pointy lighting. Now I had these two effects duplicated just with a little bit variation. So I have more of this pliny water looks. And now the two, now the top, the, sorry, the, the front part, the blobs, this is my blob <laughs> in particular. It's actually just a sphere emitter like we did at the beginning but it's emitting really big spheres the size of 42 and it gets smaller really fast. It only has a life of one second. So it looks like this. I'll crank up the exposure so you can see it better. Looks like this. And this alone Will look like this with my glass effect. 
And then I had a, a second layer, also particle layer, spherical lines. It's basically just um, a spherometer again, but um, it has a spherical field over here, which is directly behind my emitting point. And every particle which gets shot over here has to pass this spherical field. And um, I enable the aux particles to emit the particles. I'll show you how it looks like without them. It has nothing, it's only the aux particles. And I had a kind of high number of particles. And to get this kind of effect. And this is just used so uh, to get this, to get a bit contrast over here for the glass effect. So I can have lines like this one. Because without that, it looks like this. And with it, it looks like this. And I like this little lines. And yeah, this is the way I did this effect. And as you could, as you can see, uh, we have a camera here which is 3D. It's rotating um, somewhere over here. Oh, I can show you in a, in a quick time. So it's rotating, which means the effect is 3D. Um, you have to keep in mind it is 3D, but it's also just a trick. You cannot make it look like real water because um, you don't have a refraction in here. The CC glass effect is just a 2D effect. It's a, it gets applied on top of particular, um, not depending on which angle you have with your camera. So um, what you cannot do is uh, you cannot get a real refraction so it refracts whatever is behind the water like you would have in in the real world. Um, you can ha somehow fake it and this is what I also did in a newer version of my um, of my bottle splash. As you can see here um, I'll show you look at this one over here and at this part you can see the green and the background kind of reflected or, or over here too in the water this is something I did not have in my um, my first one, which is also in the internet. Um, this is the first one. As you can see over here, you don't have this kind of effect really going on in here. But in the newer version, uh, I did this. And I can show you how I did this in the second part. Okay, we're back in After Effects and I have my first scene open and um, what we are going to do is I'm going to show you what I did by just uh, going through the layers because building it up from the beginning would take too much time and I think because you already know the basic effect of the water look, uh, I can show you this a bit quicker. So let's see. Um, let's start at the background. Um, first we have a white solid with just a photo in it. It's a texture of some paint and um, I color corrected it a bit and uh, made a luma mat out of it. So it looks like a bit like a foggy window. Then I added three particular layers uh, which are basically just some iris shapes um, flowing slowly downwards and together with my black solid my ramp uh, it looks like a like a window which is defocused and it's like having rain on the window which is slowly dropping and flowing downwards so uh, this is the background then I have my camera and my lights the lights are only there for my element 3d layer which is my lime from the food spec and um, I color corrected it a bit and added some displacement effects. These displacement effects um, they are using my pre-composed particular layers um, my extras 1 and the trail my extras 2 sorry and the trail 1 which I'll show you next and uh, they're using their lightness as a displacement map so I have this 
kind of refraction going under going there under the water and um, just show you the particular layers this is the trail the basic trail it's actually the same technique as we already did just a bit different trail uh, camera wise so it fits to that bit further perspective of the second shot oh, sorry of the first shot and um, this layer over here it's using itself as a luma mat as you can see with a classic color burn um, blend mode that's why you won't see it here you just see that this part it's a black but uh, if I turn this one up there on uh, it's the same effect but uh, it just set on screen and this is the basic um, particular layer the basic of uh, water comp and uh, you always have to composite them with screen or you can choose add to if you like uh, but sometimes it will burn the highlights over here which does not look much sorry realistic uh, what I did I use screen and um, now you can see why I have this um, this layer up uh, down there with the classic color burn if you look closely over here at this area let me turn it on and off you see how it gives the water a bit more contrast and depth it looks a bit more three-dimensional and really adds something to the to the picture and uh, how I did it is uh, I just took two instances of it and the second one I made nearly completely black by turning down the curves and added a bit blur and then I used it again as a luma mat and set the blend mode on classic color burn and it's just a subtle effect but um, it, it adds a bit to it it's, it's looking really nice over here especially this part then I have uh, a second trail which is basically the same as the first one just with a different rotation angle so uh, so I get a different looking spline water spline over here which also looks nice oh and by the way um, the classic color burn layers uh, you should turn them both to 40% or even less depending on how you how much you want to exaggerate the effect um, then you have I have some extras it's again just a particular layer with uh, water turn off the alpha it's looking like this it's the big splash which comes after a while and um, it's starting over here I, it's running a bit too much I set it to half and fit let's see sorry okay here it is um, it's the, the extra two are starting somewhere in the middle and build up this big ones uh, and this bulge over here you see I just did a, um, a spherical field in particular and edit it over here so it bulges this part and makes it wider which looks cool it gives it more like a like a mm, wind canal effect okay let's turn them again on it's the same technique as always just three different instances and then I added both extras again but uh, the second sorry the first one is this one and the second one is this one uh, to to get it even more to get even more water into it and next comes the optical flares lens flare I chose chroma hoop one um, because I, I don't know this chromatic aberration um, chroma shift uh, resembles a bit with water looks nice with water effects um, while I said that um, these layers over here they are also doing something uh, which goes in this chroma shift uh, direction if I zoom in I know it's blocky let's, let's turn it on full again and when it's rendered let's take a screenshot Okay, let's take a screenshot and now I'll turn all of them on at the same time and as you see if I switch it on and off you have this low you have this bit of chromatic aberration this chroma shift 
at the borders of the water. Uh, I don't know, I like this effect. I used it in a different project once and I thought I'll add it or, uh, into this one too because uh, if you look, for example, into a glass of filled with water and you rotate it and look around, you sometimes ex experience this subtle effect of chroma, shade, like a prism, which um, spurs the light rays into uh, RGB values. So I added it too, and it's if you look at it from 100%, um, it's not that big of effect, but it's uh, it's kind of fitting into the scene. Um, yeah, this is how the first scene was built. Um, let's look at the second scene. Okay, we're here in the second scene and um, it's built up basically like the first one. The only difference is that I have this big splash. Um, these two markers are, uh, this is the entering of the lime into the bottle, this is the uh, exiting of the lime. And um, I'll go through the splash layers, I have I think five splash layers um, and just show you how I did those, but it's not entirely different. Uh, let's start with one splash, the first one. Again, it's our same technique, but as you can see, I have a lot more particular layers and I have different emitters. Uh, the reason for this is if I turn them on, I use them um, on both sides, over here and here. Yeah, uh, and uh, they're a bit different. Some of them are rotating, some are not rotating. And um, I use different values like uh, how the way how it particular is spreading the particles um, in the in the y angle. And if I show you just the particular layers, I'll add exposure again. These are the particular layers. What can I do? They also have a bit depth field, uh, but it's not necessary for the effect. But if I go through all of them, uh, I have four on one side, four on the other side. As you can see by the timing here too. Um, what they are doing is just emitting in a spread-like shape from my custom emitters. The same goes for the next layer, it just but this one is emitting like randomly uh, more into the face, into the camera. Then I, um, I have the same on the other side and then I have one which just spreads over here like um, only shooting it out at the upper angle and then uh, the same on the other side and two for for the other angle two and the shooting in the other corner and all this together if I switch the effect back on and turn down exposure again looks like this but this is just one of I think five yes five splashes four splashes there's another one which has only like small particles at the end really small and tiny ones but uh, at the beginning it's more like a thick fluid um, let's see the third one It's also in both directions, and I think yes, here I use an uh, emitter which is rotating, um, but it's not it wasn't that important at this part. Just different looking effect, and again they are all uh, blended with screen, and I'm again using the black ones over here. Then the fourth. It's looking like this, it's more a straight line and then disappearing. And um, the main one is down here. This is the one which is uh, which is emitted by the lime. It's looking like this. It's looking really cool actually. Here, <laughs> here it looks like a monster. <laughs> uh, 
yeah this one is uh is driven or it has is driven by the emitter which is moving at the same speed as our line and then it's looking like this over here and it's also looking pretty nice the line is not lit very well but it, this is just for demonstrating purposes um what else yeah um the refraction uh i added a bit of refraction over here if if i turn this off and on it's it's a fake refraction but you can see it's making it's doing a lot a lot of uh concerning how believable it is because it's blending all the background and the bottle and the water more together and um this is very simple i i just need two comps for it you need one comp and in this comp i i, I called it matte for the bottle refraction uh, i placed all my splashes into it all my particular water splashes and as you can see it's uh on white it has no alpha and uh, then i made a second comp and in this comp i had my background and i had the bottle and the line and um, here in the bottle i have five displacement maps for my five particular layers this is splashes and the first one that is just driving uh, actually it's one two three four uh, just four okay never mind um the four particular layers and again they're displacing the bottle then as you can see it looks like this it has the background but it does not have the lens flare because the lens flare is getting on top of it at the end so this one looks like this and then i took the layer the bottle for the reflection and made a luma invert f with the matte which looks again which looks like this so at the end i got this let me show it to stuff here yeah, it's looking like this it has alpha too and this one is placed on with the overlay overlay blend mode on top of everything and this is the way how you um, get this kind of fake refraction into the water when it's entering and exiting the bottle and yeah that's basically it um what else could i show you yeah one thing um if you want to have the water more thick and not that transparent uh, what you can do is add an ambient light like for example this one and set it to 100 and um, go over here in the CC glass and check that you have some ambient um, on otherwise this is the state I usually have but uh, if I add an ambient light and go into CC glass shading and turn this I wouldn't go too far because after a while you would see the texture and it wouldn't look that good but if you go somewhere like this and go back into your comp you will see that uh, it gives it a bit more thickness to the water and it could be something you were you are, you are looking for uh, however if you want to have really thick fluids um and still just use after effects um i would recommend you to see my blood pattern um, example um it's actually uh, nearly the same technique as the water it just has some different adjustments concerning particular and the cc glass effect um, and you can get this on redgiantpeople.com just search for blood splatter, splatter and um, you can download it there and um, again it will only work with After Effects CS6 and above or if you are owning the Psycho FX HD bundle for the lower versions of After Effects yeah let's go back and see um, if you want to have a little tint um, to the water like a bit different color for example if you want to try beer <laughs> actual beer uh, what you could do is um, go into particular 
and change all the colors over here in particular. They don't have to be exactly the same, they can have a little bit of variation which looks cool because for example with beer it would be more brownie over here, more orange over here, more yellow over here. Um, and you can also, to tweak it a bit more, you can also uh, change the color of the ambient light. And um, yeah, you could play with it, um, it can give some nice results. Um, but if you, like I said, if you want to have thick fluids, better take the blood spatter example and uh, play with that. Yeah, um, that's it. Long one. Um, I hope you had fun. And I hope you learned something. Um, I am very eager to see what you can do with this effect. I hope you can improve it even more. If you have any questions, just write them down in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Um, thank you very much for listening and watching and bye.